rain upon us your word holy spirit thank you the message of pain how to survive adversity and um we saw the bible speaking in psalm 34 verse 19 the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivereth him from them all so it is possible for a righteous man to find himself in what affliction i try to make us understand that that is the other side of the gospel we were never taught and see one of the things helping me to stand till date is that i had that other side of the gospel so when i find myself in unpleasant situation i know how to survive lamentations strand verse one it says i am a man that have seen afflictions the bible says that um, i'm a man that i've seen what affliction acts 14 and verse 21 to 22 he said and he went back to those places they have preached christ confirming the souls of men there saying to them that it is with much tribulation that we will enter into what the kingdom so it simply means wahala is a system in god there is a dimension of god's help you will never see if you don't enter into trouble so that you can now like david say he's my present help in time of trouble the scriptures you see we read about today where the lives of men lived there were these stories that were just written down for us to quote men lived that life and it became what a scripture for a generation romans chapter 5 from verse 3 to um, 5 he said and um, tribulation said um, tribulation worketh patience and patience what experience and experience bet hope the word hope there means a dimension of confidence you see men walking through the fire confidently knowing the end do we understand that so pain is the womb that carries progress pain is the incubator and the furnace via which god fashions men pain is a gift don't waste it it is your push into destiny there is no betting without labor pain is that not so there is no betting without what labor pain and when the labor pain become more intense what did they tell you Push. is that not so the nurse don't say don't worry you know that's what we like in the christian faith we want people to massage our ego ah you are going through a lot don't worry just be fine you know no 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 at that level what you need to hear is what push i remember when i ran a few years ago to to see one of my fathers in abuja i said to him i said daddy i'm in serious mess and i've not seen this kind of pain in my life i had everything going smoothly and suddenly look at the situation i find myself i bought a land for about five million naira, and yet we had an issue on that same land so what do i do leave it and go build somewhere else i said ah, did this man understand what i'm saying but that was the push i needed at that point in time do we understand that so you must be very careful especially in your season of pain because those are your seasons of vulnerability are we following and when men become vulnerable it is very easy for the devil to get them everything in the midst of pain can look like a miracle to you because the only thing in your mind is you want to get out of it everything every counsel every suggestion can look like a prophetic word because no one likes pain do we understand that so all you want at that point in time is for someone to just say you are coming out of this listen i said that last week there are certain kind of situation i've been there i'm teaching you based from the vantage point as i could the scripture for started from the vantage point of scripture and from personal experiences of life there are certain kind of situation of life prayer and fasting cannot take away don't deceive yourself there are times where all the bible preached to you will not make much sense it will look like everything happening to your life is direct opposite of scriptures there are certain points in times of your life where it looks like the things you pray against are the things that happen the more in your life you will find yourself there i told us one of the reasons is called the acclimatization of what watchmen because everything you are born to solve you must participate in it first yes if you will have to lead people out of egypt you must find yourself there in egypt to learn it our ways if you will lead people out of slavery you must find yourself in that situation 
the acclimatization of kings every pain you are born to solve you will first be a partaker of it that's why you see have you seen ladies who had delay in marriage when they finally marry and you give them sister singles ministry my god that one is not is not a lecture they didn't learn it is a revelation that we call communicated revelation a revelation that is just inserted into your spirit by the vantage point of an experience you just know in your knower a truth that nobody taught you that's why you now understand the scripture that says and that we that um, um i i pray that you grow in the wisdom and in the revelation of the knowledge you now understand the revelation that is behind knowledge not mere information do we understand that make up your mind to be the first to break into something new in your family that will benefit others heaven always applauds men like that who takes that challenge and say i will be the first in this family do we understand that if this family has not seen prosperity i will be the first to don't make excuses for life take responsibility tell your neighbor take responsibility bishop abioye said you have you are not yet a failure if you have not seen whom to blame I have never once in my life till date put a blame on anybody. No one. You must be solution oriented. Anytime you find yourself in an unpleasant situation, you ask yourself, Lord, help me. What is the way out? Not looking for who to put it. It doesn't advance anyone. I can still be in pain and be lamenting and explaining to everybody in the world. But it doesn't move anybody forward. Settings to note. Um, number one. God uses affliction to reveal the heart of those around us. Luke 2, 35. The Bible says that and a sword will pierce his heart. Right? And the hearts of men will be what? Revealed. Whether you like it or not, for every face of life, there will be a point you will be put in the fire. They, they gave Jesus three gifts, right? What did they give to him? Gold, mare, and frankincense. Those are the three faces of a man's life. Let, let me use ministry which I'm more familiar with to explain. So at an adventure you are just starting, you are not here there, you will prepare yourself for it. When a man starts up a walk, the first atmosphere of the anointing on him is the gold anointing. So he begins to attract people, you know, you, he, he begins to see terrible things in righteousness. Crazy, miraculous, crazy things that begins to pull the attention of men. He enjoys that for a season. Season. Every kind of people gathers around them. Then he moves into the most painful phase, which is the face of Nea. Nea signifies death. Everything at a point just stops. Everything seems not to work. The man begins to get into seasons of misunderstanding, misrepresentation. Even those very close and around him begins to fight him. Everything just turns up. It's the season of Nea. The reason is that God wants to do a sifting. Because everyone can be part of your story, but not everyone can go into you in your glory. And the most difficult thing, no matter the level of your prophetic, to discern in the hearts of men is the ungratefulness of men. I've had Father say that to me, and I'm shocked. To discern the ungratefulness of men. Do we understand that? And then when you've gone through that painful scenario, then you get into which is the face of what? Frankincense. What is frankincense? It's a scent. It begins to attract the right people who are supposed to be around you. So God does that to reveal the hearts of men. Number two, God must take you through the process to work his character in you. Number three, I said that pain is God's tool for lifting and promotion. That's why Joseph had this understanding and he was not bitter towards his brothers. He said, but God used you to send me ahead to preserve lives. If you didn't do what you do, I wouldn't even be here. You know, there are many tools in this kingdom, some for honor and some for dishonor. So some, there is nobody that is useless in this kingdom. It just matters what you are being used for. Do you understand that? He works with both vessels of honor and vessels of what? Dishonor. Number four, to make the glory sweet so, because if you have not seen darkness you won't appreciate light if you've not seen pain you won't appreciate what glory you won't know what people to go through number five to purify your passion and your motive sometimes you might think your passion is right but when you are put in unpleasant situation we will know whether you will pack up and say let me find for a way out like Paul, peter will say let's go out fishing this thing seems not to work 
Do we understand that? Number six, to solidify your faith. To solidify your faith. A faith that is not tried by God cannot be tested. That is not um, tried and tested by God cannot be trusted. Do we understand that? So everyone will go through what the Bible calls the trials of faith. After being taught the word of God, you will be put in situation where you need to make those words come alive. Do we understand that? Where only the word will become active in your life. So you don't just know it by mere theory. But in the experiential knowledge of his word. Number seven, I talked about the acclimatization of watchmen. Anything you are born to suffer, you will suffer for it. You will be the first partaker of it. Women, most of the time, that have the anointing for burying wombs. Check them. They've been burying for years. Before God was able to help them. You see them pray very easily. Do you understand that if you want to play with wealth, God will push you into pain of poverty. You will test it so that you know how it feels there. So when the wealth comes, it doesn't mean anything to you. It doesn't come over you. Do we understand that? It doesn't come over you. Number eight, to bring out the deposits of God in you. And number nine, I said to advance you by making you uncomfortable. And I tried to illustrate how that you have to be very careful of the kind of anointing you are looking for. Especially, for instance, I know the kind of grace on my life. And I know how the grace works. If you come to me, I, I try to explain to us how bad things happen to good people. The reason why. And we saw that in Genesis 26 about the story of Isaac and Gera. That if you are running a restaurant and you come to me and say, sir, pray for me. And I lay my hands and say, let your business explode. Two things I am likely to hear after you are gone. Number one, from your testimony is either that business explodes or number two, you close down the business. Most of the times I hear number two and I will tell you why. You see, that anointing, when it comes on you, it expects you to adjust yourself and prepare yourself for that level of oil. So you can't keep standing plates to serve food and expect that grace to bring an explosion. So it begins to fight you, forcing you to do the right thing that will make the oil work. It fights that mediocrity around your life. It fights that procrastination. It begins to scatter everything around you, telling you, no, no, this oil was sent to bring an explosion. But there is a kind of character, the kind of environment that sponsors explosion. That's what was happening to Isaac. He didn't know. He saw himself as just Isaac. He never knew he was bigger than a nation. Till the men came and said, please go far away from us. You are bigger than us. A country telling a single man that you are bigger than us. So that bigness in him fights anything that has to do with smallness. So you must be careful. That's why sometimes when you come and say, sir, put the anointing on me. And the anointing is placed on you. I'm very careful when it comes to impartation. Even the Bible advises us, do not lay hands on people suddenly. Because you can get into certain terrible levels of immorality that you cannot explain. Because when I put the fire of the grace on your life, right? your body tries to catch up to such heights. I, I can't put something on you. You don't have a prayer life. You don't have a study life. You don't have a devotional life. So your, your body will try to catch up to that temperature of the spirit. And then you find that it's like you are becoming more worse than you went for impactation. That's the secret. That's what really happens. Are we getting blessed on the radio? How to survive? Okay, is that where we stopped? Yes. So very quickly, I want to talk about how to survive. That's my topic this morning. But two, how to survive. That's where we are supposed to continue from. Times of tribulation. Do we understand? I've tried to give the foundation. Alright? I've tried to give the foundation. Now, if God calls you the father of many nations, you might be burning for years. That sometimes might be a starter pack. You understand? You might, you might have a dream where you see stars and moon and sun bowing to you. The next thing is that you find yourself inside the pit from there to slavery. That's sometimes his starter pack is directly the opposite of what you are seeing. You might have a vision where you saw yourself different currency. Men in Arab, they are brilliant white rounding you. You might be shocked that the starter pack might not be that way. Do you understand that? You know why? God always speaks the prophecy about the product. He never tells a man about the process. That's the problem. So he doesn't tell you how he takes you there. He just, because he's the God that knows the end, he calls it from where? 
the beginning. But your confidence will be, if he has seen the end, then he has been there before me. So it doesn't matter what I see along the way. I am still on my journey to where that end he showed me. And I will call upon your name. Keep my heart above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. survive times of pain survive moments of difficulty so you don't expose yourself to vulnerabilities that the devil takes an advantage of number one recount the past faithfulness of God is a system is a strategy you are just getting angry and getting bitter about it because you had an F can't you remember that you struggled to get admission how comes you thought see so your name appeared on the board how funny enough you forget so soon the faithfulness of this god and say the god who can do that we do the same one psalm 77 10 and 11 i will call upon your name and i said this is my infirmity that's three he said he said i remembered god and was troubled i was i complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. I had mental illness. I got into clinical depression. Why? I complained. And said, Lord, look at my years of service. Look at my faithfulness for you. What's happening? I complained. But the result of the complaint was that my spirit became what? Overwhelmed. Such that I was no longer in control of myself. I said things I shouldn't say. I did things I shouldn't do. Why? My spirit was overwhelmed that should be the point you should never get to in life where you begin to take the counsel and the suggestions of the devil and say just drink sniper are you, are you not wondering how people do those things i've shown you the scripture right their spirit is what over they don't they couldn't say no the bible calls it a broken spirit it has no will and power of his own anymore so now that look at all he kept complaining and complaining but look at verse 10 what happened Look at verse 10. Kapalusi hata hita. He said, and I said, this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand. I will, I will, I will intentionally recall myself to his past faithfulness. We I almost gave up and he showed up for me. Did you see that? I remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of God. You are too faithful to fail me. It's a strategy of how men survive those times. Lamentations 3, verse 21. Quickly, Lamentations 3 from verse 21, 26. He said, this I recall to my mind. Remember, remember verse 1 we read. He said, I am a man that have seen what? Affliction. He begins to lament his sorrows. Lament, I'm teaching you my system, my strategy of how I go through pain. Not once in the seasons of my pain did anybody saw me frown. Not once by a mistake. Why? I had prepared myself for that time. Knowing that it is an unskippable phase of life. There is a secret to the elephant size. Oh. There is a secret to the confidence of men. He said, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. Next verse. What is hope? Holding on, praying expectantly. H-O-P-E. Next verse. He said, it is of the Lord's mercies. Yes, things are not right the way. But the major thing is that I am not consumed. The promise that I will be brought out of the fire. Isaiah 43. He said, when thou passest through the waters, it will not overshadow you. So he didn't say that you will not pass. For some, they will pass, some will not pass. No, when? is a question of what timing it will happen when thou pass through the fire he said it will not burn you neither shall the flame be kindled it will smell like you went through it that's what Shedak Meshach and Abednego knew that they could tell the king permit me to answer you in this matter I don't fear this thing because there is a revelation that backs me that if I find myself in such a situation I can survive it 
It's not because they just choose to be confident. No! There was a revelation behind what they did. He said they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. If it is this God I have held on to, I have hope. Recount the past faithfulness of God. One of my biggest secrets. Some of you are out of school right now. You understand? Because sometimes challenges can make you forget how faithful God has been. Some have been in church. They have vowed, I will never give God anything. As your finances improve since then, <laughs> you have been saving it now. <laughs> Has it improved? Don't somebody rub their problem on, upon your life and push you to do things at the detriment of your own survival and advancement. Life is per head. Say, follow, follow God with sense. This thing they are doing, don't do the one. Don't, don't do this one. You do your really? Is that how it works? You think that's how it works? All the vow you are about. How has it improved you? In the midst of my pain, I was still giving out my life. In the midst of my pain, there are some of you in the even the season of you still called me for help. I was still rendering help in the midst of my pain. I didn't tell you, don't you understand what Papa is going through? You know, <laughs> I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the Listen, there is no gimmicks in this thing. Is that okay? There is no gimmicks. When it has to do with God, you can't play smart and say, let me follow wisdom. I'll come for prayer. I'll not come for this one. I'll do this one. You and God, <laughs> you have lost sense of wisdom. You don't know what you are doing. I never reduced my prayer life. one. In fact, it became more intense. I never reduced my study. I never looked for who to blame once by mistake and say the reason is the cause is the this one is no i just said lord you are faithful i knew how i started and i knew how you helped me you brought supply from places i least expected it is whatsoever a man sow it not where he sow it your problem is is not where <laughs> it has nothing to do with the where it will come from your own love is the what help from unexpected quarters. Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. You, you see what gives us confidence? Number two, I said the past faithfulness of what? Of God. Recount the past faithfulness of God. So you can see how God raises men and takes the attention away from people. You don't just know where it will come from. But it will come. Even if it warrants him sending a raving bed to hold the, the money on his pick like this and come to the room and drop it. I have so much of it to pick it because some of you think it's your village. Give thanks to God and move on. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. Give God the thanks and move on. He said, be, in everything, give God thanks for this is what the will. This is what he expects of you in some situations. In every situation, whether it is good or it is bad. Father, I thank you. Move on. Don't cling and try, try to look back. You are analyzing. You are doing. You won't advance. See, one of the things that we were not giving protection for is our back. We have the shield of faith, the breastplate. Of, there is nothing for the back. When you turn back, you'll be shot. No weapon of protection for turning backwards. Have you not heard what the, um, Joshua said? He said, "How will it be heard that Israel turns their back at their enemy? How will it be heard that I started this day at a point as I can?" Let me just leave. God forbid. He said, No man put his hands on the plow and look backwards. All that I think part time is the way forward. The way forward. The way. Give God thanks and move on. Number three, pray in a way you don't understand. You see that number two, right? Please move on. Listen, come, go to my back. L let me tell you certain secrets of life that you don't understand. I want to be a spot card. Hold me and draw me back. This is my past. It's behind me, right? Hold my hands. When I cling to my past, my past is not trying to go forward. It's trying to be there. So when I try to advance, what do, just stay. That's my past. What does it do? It pulls. That's why I see many people. They are thinking of their past heartbreak till they enter into depression. So we dream so much. They start seeing themselves in their primary school uniform. Go to my front. This is my future. My future is not static. It's trying to go advance. When I cling to what I want to achieve in the future, be going. What does it do? 
it puts me more closer to itself. Stop it. If I have stayed in that state now and keep lamenting, oh God, oh this one, hey, this one, carry police case, do this one, I will be there by now. But I made it look like my survivor is not there. The God who brought it before will still do it again. You stay with it, you are telling God that if you don't recover this thing, there is no way I will move forward again in life. So he keeps you there with it. Go wrong. Because I say life. Life is a mindset, you know. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. So I said, number three, pray in a way you don't understand. He said, is any afflicted? Let him pray. The prescription for pain is prayer. Is any afflicted? Any in severe pain? Unpleasant conditions? What's your job? Pray. Latoshigadabash. Kekaparuzetifanahatayini. Abeka kobarasa. Ego bina hati lahida eke kapara. Eko barizi ti akata. So that you don't begin to darken cancer without knowledge. I'm telling my strategy. The season of last two years when I had an unpleasant situation, I prayed from morning to night. Mama was telling some of them in the advanced some class. Morning to night. I was careful because that's how men repeat classes. They begin to use their logical sense to explain things. So I needed my spirit to be so sensitive and alive to know what God is doing. Pray in a way you don't understand. Not just to get yourself out, out of the pain, but to strengthen your spirit to manage that season of life. For content for light. As I assist, say, arise, shine, for your light has come. He say, arise and shine. He said, just arise because light. So light puts you on motion. Vision. Vision is the fuel for action. Are we following? Vision is what? The fuel for action. Look, many are where they are because they don't know what to do. Do we understand that? So he says, hey, that's why you stay, spend time in prayer. Oh God, show me the way out. I got paparata isayata kapa. Ecclesiastes 10 and 15. He said, There is the way to the city. The fool, the labor of the fool weareth him out because he doesn't know the way out. Show me the way that which I see not. Show me thou. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. I will call upon him in the days of trouble and he will show me. He won't help me out of it. He will what? Show me things I don't know. Then for light. Seek light. Seek light. Don't stay in that situation. Find out why. Lord, what are you doing with this? I'm struggling with my academics. I've prayed and fasted. I begin to ask those that are succeeding. Please, doing this. Has God help you? Seek for light. You know, Nigerians are very funny. They say there is light at the end of the tunnel, but they are not moving. They are still at the beginning. Shouting, there is light at the end. No, be persuaded, they walk out, they go end. Then go say light did it. You will be up to the end now. Is that not so? And not to be quoting it that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Away. Number five, get away from unhealthy competition, comparison, relationships, and environment. Second Corinthians 10 and verse 12. Get away from unhealthy competition, comparison, relationship, and environment. Second Corinthians 10 and verse 12. They that compare themselves with themselves, they no get sense. I'm trying to use the Wafi Bible. You are the one that think you are late. No, it's your measurement that is wrong. You are measuring yourself with somebody else. Is that God's measurement? That means are different. He makes things beautiful in his time. The Bible says that he had placed eternity in the heart of man so that man will not understand his ways. You can look at a man and conclude him because he is wrapped up in an eternal purpose, eternal plan, eternal process. So you can't understand it and just say, Fah. then suddenly after a few years you are shocked. Because he has placed eternity in the heart of men. So that even men will not understand his ways. They don't even know. They are just seeing themselves in different events of life. Different situations of life. They are wrapped up in eternity. Unveiling itself in time by time. When you choose to leave something destructive. The pains you have left with you can be called recovery. It's painful to walk away. But that pain is called recovery. Born by the same flame twice. Get out from it. Number six, maintain your joy. Joel 1 to 12. He said, The fig tree is dried up. The promega tree 
because joy has withered itself from the faces of men joy at withered. maintain your joy at all times james and verse 2 to 4 told us a principle he said that we should count it all joy count it all joy when you put yourself in temptations and trial he said for we know that this thing worketh in us patience it's molding us into something and when that patience have its way to bet what experience the strength of you being employed in any if are you growing your ranking your working place according to your what experience that's how men gain stature in the spirit by the experiences of life the holy spirit them true experiences so they can look situation and speak with confidence and say this will happen in three days not because they learned it number seven faith and patience it's 14 and verse 14 have faith confident in god and be patient he said i will wait for the days of my appointed time till my change job 13 15 he said though he slays me yet will i trust him it's like beating me and i'm refusing to cry i'm teaching you the mind of solid men in god what bets largeness in the spirit brings men to position of statue and ranking faith have you not read hebrew chapter 11 and verse 34 the bible say i'm through faith Our weaknesses were made strong feeble men who never thought they could get to where they are in life who never thought they could achieve the things they've achieved through faith out of weaknesses made strong through faith number eight hang around motivators and inspiration people places and messages psalm 68 verse 6 said and god has set the solitary in family see that there are places that are inspiration and motivations for you is it not yes you will drink sniper I, I, i'm telling you know one of the things that pain tried to do to us is to make us isolate is that not so and i say isolation makes you slow and late that's why it's called isolate it makes you slow and late you need people he sets the solitaries you need places david said it in the presence of god joy that is why you see if i'm the government of every country i will be sponsoring churches because we are helping the mental people know normal people know normal for this country again no be so people know normal that's why you must be careful. You enter boss, you enter. Be careful. You see your gas shift, you feel your slap. People are not okay again. Churches is helping. So if there is no churches, I read the story of a man who, who had issue with his wife. That's carry something, hit her, hit her, kill her, kill her. When she cut, start cutting. People know normal. That's why they must places. Sometimes are you not seeing how down you were? You just came to church. Just a word. Ancient words ever true. The pastor didn't give you money, but he gave you the word. And you just felt relief in your soul again. So I said, find systems of inspiration and motivation. People, places, songs, or messages. Said he that singeth sunk to a heavy heart. Songs. That's one of my systems. When I sometimes I'm in a confused state, you just see me leave that song. Lord, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. I'm speaking to myself. Give me vision to see things like you do. Lord, I look to you. Where has my help come from? Give me wisdom. Number nine is refuse to be comfortable with pain. I say again refuse to be comfortable with pain you are going through unpleasant situation sufficiently react against it sufficiently that's what push you to take step you are not comfortable to act uh, academics react you are not comfortable see there is a kind of thing it depends on the number of us that push it to there are things you can push with normal you know um, um, what do you call this system Tro um, tro is it trolley like uh, there are things you need who those are sufficient pressure react against it react against such limitations in your family i told you all sometime one time i had a pleasant unpleasant situation i was i started praying 14 hours daily 
If it didn't stop, I would have increased it. React against it. Don't get comfortable and massage it. And say, Satan, stop. Satan, please. Just don't do this again. Oh, no, stop. Sufficient. Strong. Sufficient pressure. Number 10. Daily affirmations. I know some of you have abused it. You just copy the thing and drop everywhere. But I want to tell you, teach you something about it. <laughs> Psalm 42, verse 5 and 11. Bela, su bela. Why a dog cast down? You can see it's not just something you just learn from Brian Tracy. It's a scripture where you talk to yourself. Listen, the devil is not scared of the scripture you have upstairs, but the one you chose to proclaim. They left Jesus alone. He was just moving around. He knew he was the son of God. Nobody said anything. But the moment he said, I and my father are one, he took stones. He doesn't want you to affirm the reality of Christ. Tell him, speak to yourself. Sometimes I tell myself, stand, calm down. <laughs> calm down. You can speak. See, if you spend much time talking to yourself than the way you are shouting on others, you will move forward with your life. Teach you what we do internally. Our spiritual exercises. Why are thou disquieted, oh my soul? Have hope in God. I'm coming out of this. I live an excellent and a glorious life. I am full of wisdom and super intelligence. I am not stranded. I don't lack anything good in my hands that I need. Keep saying it till you see it. Daily affirmations. Once your pain can silence your confession, your confession will soon silence your pain. I spoke my way out of every painful situation. I spoke my way out of it. Who achieved this? Don't worry, everybody be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We'll do this, we'll get this right. Don't worry, we'll finish this. Speak. That's what we call the not those ones you are just quoting and putting on. See, listen, listen, listen. You know, I've seen all kind of things are done in the body of Christ. Daily affirmation is not for what's our status. Home. They say you should talk to yourself. What are you putting on status? Some of you did not even say anything to you post. That's why you're like where you are but your status is changing online i speak to myself the wealth of the gentiles are coming to me men are coming under divine compulsion apostolic and prophetic pressure to lose their sleep lose their peace lose their rest they show me favor kings are looking for me from the north from the east the west from the seven continents of the earth i help is coming for me lord angels you are touching the heart of someone right now to remember me for God. Please, listen. The word of God, don't make a mockery of a shipwreck of your faith. The word of God is not for you to just come and hear and go home. It's to look for action points. After every service, you write under the note, my decisions. If I show you some of my notes, that's what you see there. What my decisions. I'm saying what I will after this sermon. said, the problem with the body of Christ is that every week, we are trying to share new revelation. He said, nobody grows like that. Because you know it's competition. If I don't share a new light now, you change church. At the moment your members can recite and say, before you say a statement, they know what you want to say. They just start to understand the message. That's why go and look at those men. They will preach faith one year. Then they will raise valiant men in God. So they are just entertaining members. They copy notes like secretaries. They will read lift up your hands the lord increase you the lord multiply you the lord position men across in the name of jesus you will not be stuck in life out of every unpleasant peace situation i pull you out out of every fires of life i pull you out in the name of jesus